I was talking with one of my coaching clients who was getting confused about the number of management models there are when it comes to leading people into an uncertain future. Which one should I use, they asked. As a good coach, I asked them a question back. Why do you think you should use only one model? The very successful Charlie Munger talks about when he wanted to familiarize himself with psychology and bought himself the three main introductory textbooks at that time. Each talked about different psychological biases and motivations. In the end, he felt convinced that each work had got it wrong because what he had observed was that critical change happens in people where three or more of these forces are working at once in concert. He called this the Lollapalooza effect, and he used this to great effect in investing through Berkshire Hathaway. What if my client could identify more than one model that was relevant? What if they used three or four or more? What we call a management model is a sort of map. A map is a simplification of what is on the ground, and it helps us navigate through that territory. But there is an old adage, the map is not the territory. No, it can't be. One time I was attending a party at Lancaster Gate in London, arriving from outside London at Paddington Rail Terminus. I consulted the excellent London Underground map, which is very clear and colourful, showing me which routes I could follow and where to change. Sure enough, by changing at Notting Hill Gate, I arrived at Lancaster Gate. It took me only 17 minutes in all. Well done, London Underground. When I told a group at the party, mostly Londoners themselves, how I had arrived there, they chuckled with mild astonishment and some pity. Didn't I know? I could have walked from Paddington Station in about 12 minutes. That evening, I was reminded that the map, however good it is, is not the territory. The challenge in this complex world is that no useful map is useful in every context. What if there were short explanations of these models or maps? What if they were all grouped together in one place? What if they also came with resources, templates and hints about how other related maps might also be helpful? What if they were all collected into a sort of room, a map room? That's exactly what I decided to do. I created the leader's map room and formed different sections within it. There's a section on core maps, those that are useful for all leaders at whatever level. There is, of course, one about leading organisations, another one about leading teams. There are also parts of the map room that help you lead yourself and show you how to harness the power of outliers in your change. However, there are a number of things this map room is not and never will be. It's not a course that you must begin at the beginning and plod your way through in the trainer's intended sequence. You can dip in anywhere. It's more like a library than a course. And it's not static. I add maps to it from time to time, particularly in response to the comments and questions from members of the map room and from my coaching clients. And as each new map is added, Links are placed in other relevant maps. Finally, it is not subscription-based. You are not locked into something that requires you to set up recurring payments. There is simply one lifetime membership, and it's yours, including access to all future maps that I might add. My aim is to provide you with an invaluable resource that can help you get that Lollapalooza effect in your own area of leadership, that this will become something of increasing value to you.